it is a mystery uh, and this is putting a lot of burden on us all of us that uh, everybody is seeking for information just as we do and they think that we have answers uh, unfortunately we don't Abdullah we've, we've, we've heard from the Turkish government that have said that they believe that he your father walked into the consulate that he was choked that he was that he was then killed um, from the Saudi government we understand that he was killed until now it's uh, vague like it's the story like the details what exactly happened inside uh, as you know how is the media Twitter TV stations everybody's telling a different story and for me I I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible that uh, he died yeah and as simple as that and, and you were the last one of, of your father's children to to see him you saw him two months ago in Turkey how how was he then he was happy he, it was a very like it was a very good opportunity for me to see him we hung out around uh, Istanbul we had fun and I think I was really lucky to have that last uh, moment with him how has all this been on your family on your mother and your sisters it is it, uh, it's difficult like it's not easy uh, especially when the story gets this big it's not an easy this it's uh, confusing even the way we grieve it's a bit confusing like because uh, we're grieving at the same time we're looking at the media and the misinformation like uh, there's a lot of uh, ups and down it's not a normal uh, situation like it's not it's not a normal this at all. all all what we want right now is to bury him in, in Baqir with in Medina with his with the rest of his family in, in Saudi Arabia in Saudi Arabia yes I talked to that uh, I talked about that with uh, the Saudi authorities and uh, I just hope that it happens soon but you need to find somebody needs to find his his body yes uh, I believe that the search is ongoing and I'm really hopeful about that but w what do you place your hope in it's an Islamic tradition uh, it, it's not only Islamic it's he, it's basic humanitarian issue uh, we just need to make sure that he rests in peace uh, until until now I still can't believe that he's dead. Uh, it's, I, I know, uh, I mean, it's not sinking in with me emotionally. He has deceased, for sure. But uh, the, the, the emotional burden that is coming with, uh, with the puzzle is, is, really, is really big. When you went into your father's apartment here in, in the United States, you, you, you discovered something that made you realize just how important you, his grandchildren, were, were to him. What was, can you tell yeah, us about I think, that? Uh, going to the apartment, uh, that was maybe the most emotional moment I had, like in this past days. This picture, especially, it was next to his bed stand. Uh, next to his bed and uh, his grandchildren uh, and that's the last thing he looked at before he goes to bed it's, uh, that, that thing shocked me like, not, not shocked but it's just it showed a side a new ma not, not a new but uh, it put an emphasis on his gentle tender side of loving his family his grandkids and uh, the last thing he would see at night was his yeah. grandchildren and he yeah. put that there so he would see yeah. it. It's, it's just something huge and it touched me personally like it's and all of the family when they knew about it what, what are you proudest of he's always said the truth like uh, basic human uh, just a good person as simple as that and he was very brave he was always out there like for me he was like a rock and roll star and jer as a journalist like because yeah. he, he, he was yeah, sort of pushing he, the system a bit yeah like. and he's uh, always pushing he was always uh, 
Yeah, he's brave. There, there have been people who've been trying to sort of create a different impression about him, a different legacy, allegations that he was sort of supported the, the Muslim Brotherhood. I don't believe so. Uh, can Abdullah, he, he, he can shed the light on that. I used to tease him also. Like the last time when I met him in Turkey, I, 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 used, to, I used to tease him like, oh, I read this on Twitter, like uh, they're saying you're Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, where is your beard? Where is something? And he, he laughs and he tried, to, he goes in details. I'm not Muslim Brotherhood because of this, 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 this. And they cr I just and he hear. Said that to you. Yeah, right and uh, it's just labels or it's just people not doing their homework properly and d reading his article, d going in depths. So it's just easier for them just to stick a label on him, like, oh, you're something, you're that, you're that, you're that. Can you tell us about that meeting with the Crown Prince and the King? Yeah, in that meeting with the King and the Crown Prince, when I went there with my uncle Sahab, the King has stressed that everybody involved will be brought to justice. And I have faith in that. This will happen. You're placing your faith in the king? Yes. In your heart of hearts, what do you think happened? <sighs> Something bad happened. Something might be, but I really hope that uh, whatever happened, it was just, uh, he, it was, it wasn't painful for him or something like that, or just it was quick, or he had a peaceful death. That's what I wish for. I'm not sure. I'm just waiting for the facts to come out. It's, uh, for me, it's just death. Uh, I know that he's dead. All I'm waiting for is for the investigation to be over so the facts uh, can turn out. How do you think your father would want to be remembered? as a moderate man who, is, who has common values with everyone, genuine and honest, a man who loved his country, who believed so much in it and its potential. Jamal was never a dissident. He believed in the monarchy that it is the thing that is keeping the country together. And he believed in the transformation that, is, that it is going through. And that's how, that's how he should be remembered.